Hi, this is James Sondriger here at Juniper Networks Education Services. Are you familiar with our learning pads? We offer 14 different pads covering the Junos OS and specific Juniper technologies. Each path shows the courses we offer and the relevant certifications in the order we suggest to maximize your learning. Just visit www.juniper.net slash learning pads to get started. When you click on a track, you'll see all the courses in that track and the associated certifications. You can click each course or certification to view more details. If you follow a learning path, you'll get the most from your training with Juniper Networks. Now, let's get to your learning bite. My name is Tom Hanley. I have a learning bite today that I'd like to talk about. It's about source-specific multicast features. In this particular learning bite, I'd like to talk about how PCs that are only capable of supporting IGMP version 1 or 2, being able to participate in a source-specific multicast model. So how would we make that happen? The other two things I'd like to talk about, first, how if we have a shortage of source-specific multicast addresses, how do we share those that are in the any source multicast address space? And vice versa, how would we share any source multicast address space if we have a scarcity from the source-specific multicast space? So let's first talk about source-specific multicast and let's kind of take a look at this model and how it works. We have a receiver, a PC down at the bottom of the diagram that is a IGMP version 3 capable PC. The user wants to participate in a multicast and has already kind of received the information about the multicast either through an email, a website that they've connected to. So they have both the multicast group and the multicast source. So what we see being initiated from the receiver is a IGMP version 3 report specifically for the group of 232.777 and the source specific address of that group in that multicast 192.168.100.10. That goes to R5 which is the designated router for the receiver. The R5 will generate as a result a PIM protocol independent multicast join message specifically to the source address for the group. It sends it basically toward the designated router for the source, which in this case is R1. R1 will then set up a shortest path first tree to R5, and the multicast will go directly to from the, the source through the R1 to R5 and to the receiver. So what is the basic configuration for source-specific multicast look like? And we see kind of a configuration that's already been accomplished. We see that in protocols IGMP for the specific interface going to the user on the router, we see version 3 being implemented, PIM being implemented also on that interface in sparse mode, and all other interfaces are also configured in sparse mode as well. What you do see the absence of here, because it's not required, is the rendezvous point configuration. And that's kind of the advantage here. We don't have to worry about a rendezvous point and configuring a rendezvous point. So what if I have a user PC that is incapable to support IGMP version 1 because they're only IGMP version 1 or IGMP version 2. They cannot support IGMP version 3. Will they be able to participate in a source specific multicast stream? And the answer is yes, we can statically configure this functionality on the designated router for the receiver. Even though the receiver is only sending an IGMP report using either version 1 or version 2. So let's see the configuration that would allow that to happen. So when we take a look at this configuration, we see to the bottom left is kind of a policy that we're configuring. And in the policy, and you see the name of it, user defined name, we're defining in the term, in the from statement, the route filter, which is the actual group 
that's responsible for the multicast and then we're accepting it. We're taking this policy, very simple policy, we're now going in the routing options multicast and we're creating a source specific multicast map. We're calling in this case example. We're applying the policy that we created up above and also the address of the source of the multicast. So both of them are kind of married together in this configuration. And then we see over to the right is actually applying this source specific multicast map to the interface in protocols IGMP. And you also see that the version 2 is also configured on the same interface because the user's PC is not able to support version 3. So let's kind of take a look at the configuration that allows this to happen. Basically, if I go to and log into a router in this case, I'll kind of go through the policy configuration first. So we're going to policy options, policy statement. We're going to configure a group of the policy name similar to what we saw earlier. So in our from statement, we're creating a route filter with the group address. And we want that exact address. And that's going to be the only thing we have to do. And in the action, we're just accepted. So when we uh, do a display of the policy, we see the very simple policy that we've actually created. Now we go into routing options. So multicast and create the multicast, um, source specific multicast map. Uh, again, we're calling this example for our, our example. And uh, basically combining the policy that we created along with the source. So we're kind of bringing them together. So when we display our routing options, we see under multicast the source specific multicast map with the combined accommodation of the policy and, and also this, the source address of the multicast. And now the last step we need to do is we need to go into protocols. IGMP and for the interface in question. And we show the configuration of the IGMP version and also the uh, source specific multicast map. So when an IGMP version 2 report is sent from the receiver to the router's interface that's configured with this map, the router will then set up a PIM join message to the source of the multicast as if it were an IGMP version 3 request. All right, so uh, some other things I'd like to talk about here, two other things. We have the address ranges that are available with uh, any source multicast. We have those that are available with source specific multicast, some very hard restrictions with the source specific multicast range, no IGMP version 1 or 2 joins or no shared tree operations. That's the default behavior. But we can change that and two things we can change is we can kind of change so that we can actually take and use for source specific multicast operations some of the any source multicast address ranges and we can do the opposite for source specific multicast ranges being made available for any source multicast application. So we see uh, basically the configurations that are going to allow this to happen 
and basically you see they're all done in edit routing options multicast you see the first configuration allows source multicast the groups to use the range which is normally in the any source multicast range 227.0.0.0 slash 24 and then the ASM override SSM allows the use of a source specific multicast address range the 232 slash 8 to be used for any source multicast. So thank you for joining my learning bite. We kind of went over some IGMP version 3 operations, the default operations. We saw how we could actually create an IGMP version 3 type of uh, session being set up when the user station is not capable of doing that. So that's with the source specific multicast map. We also saw how we could override the default source specific multicast address ranges and the any source multicast address ranges. So uh, thanks for joining my learning bite. For additional information, you see on the slide. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.